Movember, day 11. This is a video that will be a sort of a part two for the addictive system presentation I've done. So um, if you're just tuning into this and you want to look at what this is built on top of, it's Patrick Carnes' addictive system that has the addictive cycle within it. That's a tool for helping you to dismantle the bomb, which is addiction, by making the unconscious conscious. This tool is about looking at what do we transform to? Uh, there's a lot of talk these days about addiction being disconnection and to recover we need connection. That addiction is largely a response to dysfunctional or developmental immature parenting. And, and we've come from trauma and abuse and replicate that uh, through the, the problems and unmanageabilities of addiction and largely that, that is just a way of escaping those core pains and core beliefs of our childhood. So this is a model that we need to transform to. So I want to go through that. It's the recovery system by Patrick Carnes as understood by me. If you're watching this and what I'm about to present doesn't work for you, it's not, um, it doesn't speak to you, uh, then please continue to look for an addiction professional that helps you. And um, if you're a loved one, uh, of a family member and you're trying to assist them and help them get support. Again, if this doesn't fit your worldview, please continue to look. There is a variety of ways for people to get well. This is just something that personally speaks to me and I've worked with addicts and it seems to work for, for the ones that subscribe to it. So let me go through it with you. So when we look at it, the addictive system, it looks at the core beliefs that were influenced and created by our childhood traumatic experiences. So in recovery, we need to subscribe to some provisional beliefs to get us going. Largely, our best thinking got us here, so it's not gonna get us out of here. We need to, as Carnes presents in uh, Facing the Shadow and in Facing Addiction, um, we, we need to subscribe to provisional beliefs that have a substantial paradigm shift in our thinking. Now, if our best thinking got us here, those beliefs sometimes sometimes aren't inside us. So, so essentially, we're looking to subscribe to provisional beliefs. And, and, and he um, draws on the success literature of Stephen Covey to, to say, look, here's some temporary beliefs that you can insert to this hardware and focus on and, 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 and start to really memorize to change the way that you experience yourself. Um, it, it's not going to overnight erase the... Uh, behaviors of the, the beliefs of the past, but it's an opportunity to focus the brain. As Dan Siegel, when he talks about focusing uh, awareness, the wheel of awareness meditation that he uses to deliberately practice on a daily ba basis, refocusing us. This is an opportunity to subscribe to um, these provisional beliefs until we can get um, beliefs that really work for us personally. Some of the ways that we do this in 12-step think, 12-step programs is, is, is instead of having impaired thinking that leads to the addictive cycle, we need empowered thinking that leads to the renewal cycle in recovery. So uh, some of the things I like to refer to in empowered thinking that helps us is the slogans of the 12-step world. Um, those slogans can be uh, sometimes just little bumper stickers of reminders to steer us away from cognitive distortions and defenses into just, just more helpful thinking. So some of those are let go and let God. Um, if, if you're an atheist or agnostic, that God can stand for good orderly direction. Think, think, think when we're really not focusing or easy does it if we're overthinking and overfocusing. Um, the slogans help help us just just get back on track. So, looking for uh, empowered thinking that can help um, guide us in our recovery towards the renewal cycle. Sometimes in that we can have uh, your uh, what's very popular at the moment is gratitudes. So having a gratitude list because addicts generally our best thinking got us here. So so gratitude lists are getting us deliberately to focus on things that. We are grateful for today. Let's look at the cup that's half full, not half empty. And that doesn't happen naturally in early recovery. We need to guide ourselves to it. So these beliefs that might largely need to be provisional over time, if we really subscribe to some slogans, um, rituals that empower our thinking and guide our thinking, it, it allows us to, to invest in new neural pathways that will eventually become our dominant thinking. In the beginning, it's not. Our impaired thinking is the dominant thinking. 
So uh, I heard a fellow once call this, um, Trevor, if you're out there, uh, um, first thought wrong disease. And if you've got this uh, d d disease or disorder, it feels like that sometimes, where the, the, my best thinking is steering me down an old path. But if I subscribe and get some support and go to stuff outside of me, I can largely get empowered and lead me to a different direction. Now, that, that generally empowered thinking is meant to lead us towards a, a renewal cycle. And this renewal cycle is its main job. If you think of the, the American Medical Association says that it's largely addiction is, the, is a brain disease of reward, memory and related motivational circuitry, then what we're doing by refocusing our, our, ourselves and having a renewal cycle is I want to affect and heal the same organ, not just from the addiction, but from underlying developmental trauma. So, so the renewal focus, this empowered thinking, is meant to guide me towards a cycle of support that's going to create new neural networks that will eventually become my dominant networks. And to do that, I've got to have an ability to focus. And I think um, one of the tools that people use the most for this focusing is mindfulness. And to, to get us focused on the breath, the, the breath and our bodies, our somatic experience of self, to stop running away from feelings and learning to sit with them. That this, this look, focusing ourself uh, and, and these mindful, mindfulness and the program need to become rituals. And just like they talk about in addiction with people, with places, and with things in recovery, um, the rituals now need to be focused on reprogramming this brain, literally starting to trigger our dopamine and our oxytocin and our serotonin back into, uh, you know, by this, this sort of new form of hunt mode where we pursue, pursue recovery by focusing and creating these rituals. And that, that's going to mean for some of us, it's not just getting rid of old people like the dealer or relationships that are toxic for us. It's, it's embracing new people, a therapist, a sponsor, connecting with others like us that don't shame us for how we are, but they also stand, you know, with us in change. You know, we've, we've had enough, you know, addicts are largely sheep. We just go with the flow. We need people that are willing to challenge our reality with our consent. So finding people, new places. For some of us, when I first got clean and sober, I couldn't go back to pubs for a while. I couldn't see live rock and roll. I needed to step out of those places. They were too triggering. Now I can go and I really enjoy it. And I remember everything because I'm not smashed. And I've got money to buy merch and t-shirts because I used to spend all that in drugs and alcohol. So the idea of people change, places change. We need to um, bring in new places. Uh, it might be a 12-step meeting or fellowship. It might be um, some form of religious or spiritual embrace that we've got now, a realization center or meditation center. We might return to our church or religion of our childhood. We might start to explore some of those things, but we'll be taking on and embracing new activities in new places. And for some of us, this is really challenging, but it will eventually create a whole new life. And, and so some of the things change in our life too. And when I was an addict, I used to have a pencil case. I used to stick down in my boot. It had my syringes and all my paraphernalia that I needed. I had bongs hidden at home, papers in that pencil case that I needed to smoke pot. But, but for recovery, that needed to change. And I remember early on in recovery, one of the first things I bought was the 12th step, the basic text for Narcotics Anonymous. I used to stick it in this little bag I bought from a disposal store and I'd put a sandwich in there and take a drink because I was poor and I was on the sickness benefits back then and I'd go to meetings. and take the food I needed because I, they were new rituals, new things, but that book I'd pull out in the train and read. And they were the beginning of taking on new things. In my house now, it's a house full of, of, of things that are significant in my recovery, significant from the gifts of recovery, pictures of my children, my wedding ring, things that, that are evidence of my recovery. My phone's full of phone numbers of people I ring, WhatsApp groups I'm part of. And, and so, these, these, are these rituals invested in but will, will create a, a recovery zone. And this is the opposite to that acting out zone, that, that I'm actually now going to be um, invested in these rituals, that I'll be a member of those programs. I will be doing service in the areas that, of, uh, you know, that I'm involved in and the places that I go to, that, that, that I will build up over time in these rituals, this zone where I feel 
on it and in it. Now, in recovery early on, we, we don't feel that way. Um, Patrick Kahn says it can take two to five years to get a lot of the resilience and rewards we need. But, but what amazes me is that sometimes making that phone call and you hang up the phone to someone that you've outreached to and you're in that zone, you've got hope. You're not self-centered. You're part of a bigger thing. And, and, and this recovery zone, when, when it's felt and touched upon, is, is pretty amazing. And, and it sometimes is contrary to anything we believe that we could establish for ourselves when we have those negative core beliefs. So this recovery zone, lived in regularly, has incredible rewards. And these reward, rewards now can be um, l- largely internal. We start to value ourselves. We take better care of ourselves. They can be external. We therefore get better jobs. We start to retrain. We start to... to um, experience life differently because we are not obsessed and compulsed in an area that's destroying us. And so some of these rewards, I mean, (coughs) if I had to think of the things that that I feel are rewards for me, they're not going to sound too fancy to you, but they're fancy to me. Friends I can ring every morning if I've got a a problem, stuff I'm worried about, things that I need to share, just to offload, Not, not addiction mayhem, just life on life's terms, fears about my children, fears about how I am in relationship, fears about my business, things that, that I just need to offload. I never learned from my family that it was okay to learn how to problem solve, to seek consultancy, get feedback from others. That never happened in my family. I learned to shut down, keep quiet, and look and watch and try and survive. So the rewards that can come in recovery can largely be, if you told me what they were going to be in early recovery, I probably might have signed up. They didn't sound too exciting because I was used to intensity. But the rewards can be when you've given up that addiction to intensity, quite um, stabilizing and safe. You know, I laugh sometimes with my wife regularly because we've got three kids under seven, and Saturday night can find us in bed early. It's like, but we're both music fans and and love going out to live music. And if you told us that, we mightn't have believed you once, but I believe it now because I love those three boys sleeping down the hall until they come and dive in my bed. This renewal cycle activated daily. Because in the beginning, they say 90 meetings in 90 days. Ring a sponsor every day. If I think of SLA, Sex and Love Addicts Anonymous, they make three outreach calls a day, one to your sponsor and, and then two to two other people. They read literature. they got questions they answer every day. It's fantastic. Lots of people resist it and don't want to do it, but it's fantastic because it is redesigning and healing the brain. If this is a brain dis-ease of reward, memory, and related circuitry, motivational circuitry, then... By creating a new focused ritual, even if it doesn't feel good, we are writing new programs in the brain. The brain is malleable and it is plastic. It will continue to write programs and change the firing patterns of old programs. But we have to take responsibility for healing it. It won't heal itself. So, so this, 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 uh, the idea that this focused ritual and recovery, when we get the rewards, our brain, like an addiction, seeks pleasure, seeks more of it. So as we get those rewards, I want to do more and more of that. Now, as that happens, then life, instead of having problems and unmanageability in this section, we start to experience resilience. We have what the AAs uh, uh, called emotional sobriety. We are not now functioning in and outside of our window of tolerance. We're not in chaos or rigidity that we're starting to function more and expanding this window of tolerance in the world. Now, this isn't, that doesn't mean that, that, that every gift's wrapped in shiny paper. Sometimes uh, it's a challenge to get through days clean. Life on life terms happen. We lose a loved one. We get an illness. Uh, we go bankrupt. We have bad financial advice, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Things can go wrong. But the resilience is for addicts, we don't need to use over it. I've uh, seen my father die. I've seen... Uh, a, a child that had an early recovery born dead. It's like, I've seen some tragedy. I've lost jobs. I've lost faith in myself. I've experienced mental illness, breakdowns in recovery. But the resilience was, I continued to reach out for help. I continued to tell the consultants in my life what was going on. I continued to participate in this renewal cycle. And the resilience kept growing. So uh, what happens is once we have these rewards and resilience, it of course continues to grow our beliefs and and our personal values but these core beliefs that used to be so negative 
from, from this renewal cycle and this recovery system, now we can sort of let go of those provisional beliefs that we had in the beginning and they become quite personal. They're our beliefs now from, from here on in. I hope this has been useful as the work of Dr. Patrick Carnes and the International Institute of Trauma and Addiction Professionals. Um, there's some fantastic books out there on it. You'll find this in Facing Addiction or Facing the Shadow. I hope it's been useful. This has been a Movember video. Um, I'm still sort of waxing and growing this thing. Um, please check out my Movember page. Donate if you can. Subscribe if you like this and share the video with others if you think it could be helpful. And remember, be gentle with your heart today. Bye.